guys and welcome to Discovering Dorset the Shea Way. Uh, today I'm going to be starting the Dorchester mini series where I'm going to be taking you on a whistle stop tour around the sites and the history points within Dorchester on four small adventures. So today's number one, let's get to it. Today's mini adventure is known as the Gallows Walk and we'll be starting off our walk on High West Street. We start off our walk here just opposite Dorchester Corn Exchange. It looks like this. Right on the edge of High East Street and High West Street. And we'll be coming round and down the main thoroughfare. You'll notice as you come down the High Street, you come to what is now a Costa Coffee. This was, and is, in fact, the birthplace of Sir Frederick Treves, who was born in 1953. He was a famous surgeon and he pioneered the removal of the appendix and he even became the surgeon to Prince of Wales and later Edward VII. He rescued John Merrick, the elephant man from a freak show and wrote a book on the subject. He also wrote the book Highways and Byways in Dorset which was first published in 1906. You want to walk through and down here until you see the works and you hit Derngate Street. As you make your way down Derngate Street, you'll notice some of these lovely old pictures with some interesting information along the sides. We're actually following the old Roman road and this goes straight through the town of Dorchester which was once known by the Romans as the town of Dernavaria. You'll also notice a plaque to the famous Australian landscapes painter Tom Roberts who was born in this street on March of 1856 and died in Tasmania in 1931. You'll also notice this lovely statue of the Dorset Shepherd, which is a reminder to Dorchester's ongoing role as a market town, with strong historic links to sheep and the wool industry. As you come down the road, you will want to keep on going past the famous Dinosaur Museum of Dorchester. I will actually stop and show you quickly, because they're quite cool. These large model dinosaurs they have. But yes, you want to carry on going down that way. Once you come to the Salvation Army Church just here, you want to follow this road, and you'll find yourself seeing a sign that says Salisbury Fields. You want to head up this way. As you come up and over the hill, you'll find yourself in this lovely wide open field play area, which is Salisbury Fields. Plenty of area for you to go for a quick picnic if you want, or stop and have a drink. There is a beacon just here. Now Salisbury Fields has been used for lots of events throughout the years, and this beacon was lit during many of them. Two of the more recent ones that I could note would be the Queen's Golden Jubilee and the Millennium New Year. As you come around the corner, you'll find yourself upon Gallows Hill, where I'm sat right now. They are doing some tree surgery at the moment, so it might get a little bit loud. But you'll also notice there's a Victorian sewage venting pipe, which is quite interesting. This is also one of the main sites that was used for public executions. Prisoners who were condemned to death here were offered one last drink at the Star Pub, which was just down opposite the Dinosaur Museum I showed you earlier. If you were to follow the path round and down to the left there, you'll be able to see St George's Church and Fordington Green. They date back all the way to 1076. You just need to retrace your steps back up this path, come back here and then you'll be able to carry on your walk. As you come across the road you'll see these lovely bronze statues. They were created in 1986 by sculptor Elizabeth Frick. They represent those in Dorset who down the ages died for their faith. You'll notice the two martyrs face the figure of death across a circle plaque which reads For Christ and conscience sake. You'll find yourself walking down south walks. This is lined by horse chestnut trees and marks what was once the outer border of the Roman defences. Alright, slight distraction from the main video then guys, I do apologise, but uh, I just found uh, somebody's bag which contained their purse, it had all their money and uh, phone and all sorts in it, and um, so luckily I've managed to 
call up someone on their phone. They didn't answer, but just as I was calling them, somebody that I knew, which actually ends up being the carer of this lady who's lost their bag and purse, comes running over with the lady saying, oh, is that ours, is that ours? And lo and behold, it is. So a happy end to that little escapade. Now let's get on with the main video. As you come up and past this large building that'll be on your right, it is actually uh, the library at the moment. You'll find some seating so you can sit down and rest. And this is also the site of the old Roman baths. They were excavated in 1978 before being carefully covered back over again by these two car parks. If you head over to Waitrose, just over here, you can take the stairs or just round the corner, you should be able to find yourself going in through there and there is a lift or some stairs down to the basement and we should be able to find some illustrations marking this. So we're going to go do that now. Just as it says here, marked in mosaic on the floor of this car park are the positions of 20 huge posts. At one time these formed part of the late Neolithic monument, 2500 BC, which later became buried under southeast corner of Dorchester, Durnav area. There is more information there, I did just take a picture, so please pause if you'd like to read it all. I will now take a picture of a couple of those mosaic markings for you. As you can see, it stretches right across the basement of the car park here. It would have been an absolutely massive structure at one point. Very cool. Even goes right down and under that car. The area would have been large enough to contain 10 full-size football pitches, so it must have been of significant importance in Neolithic times. You can decide to take the lift or the stairs to the ground floor. We will come to our last spot of the day, the Tudor Arcade. And you'll come across this beautiful artwork. And also, Potter's Cafe. This section here would have made up the ancient grain held in. You'll also find these five panels that I've just shown you. Now they tell the story of Dorchester throughout the ages. On the left, starting with an artist's depiction of how the wooden henge may have been built, all the way through the medieval ages, all the way through to the 19th century with Thomas Hardy. As you walk yourself back up Tudor Arcade, you'll come past many lovely little shops one of which, for instance, would be this crystal shop. Quite cool, quite interesting. Some beautiful things in there. But you'll find it loops you back round to the main thoroughfare of Dorchester. If you took a right, you'd end up back at your start point. Dorchester mini-series. There's three more to come, so please do keep your eye out, and of course, I'll catch you all.